Hello everyone, and welcome to Python programming practice. In this lesson, we're going to be covering leet code number 66. It's called plus one. This is classified as an easy problem, so the solution shouldn't take too long to do. I'll start by reading the problem description. Given a non-empty array of decimal digits representing a non-negative number, Increment one to the integer. The digits are stored such that the most significant digit is at the head of the list, and each element in the array contains a single digit. You may assume the integer does not contain any leading zero except the number zero itself. And then there is an example here because that was perhaps not the easiest intro to get. So basically, we're going to be passed some digits as a list, one, two, three, and we just want to add one to the integer represented by those digits. So like in this case, these digits represent the number 123, and then we want to add one to that, So, but it, keep it in this list form. So we want to output 124. So basically all we've done here is add one to the ones place. So that seems fairly easy, but I guess the case where you end up having a nine in the ones place means that becomes a zero when you add one to it. And then the one has to be carried over to the next place. That seems like it's essentially the only reason this problem has like any sort of difficulty to it. And so let's look at another example. So we have four, three, two, one, and then we want to return four, three, two, two. So we just added one to that digit. I feel like, oh, maybe they have one that, uh, oh, so if we're just past digit zero, I guess that's a thing we could be past. We just add one to it. Um, fine. But it, it seems like they really should have provided an example where there's actually going to be a nine and you have to carry the one because that seems like the kind of case where you actually have to think about how to implement that. Um, and we have some constraints. The digit length, so the length of the list is between one and 100. And then of course the actual digits in each place is between zero and nine because you can't have more than nine in a digit place, at least if you're doing base 10, which this problem should be doing. So let's pull over to the code editor and think about how we can do this. Now, the main issue here is that dealing with an integer that is contained in a list with each place separated by the different indices in the list. That's kind of a weird way to represent an integer. So one way that you will often want to deal with things like that in Python, at least, is just convert the data type to whatever is the kind of most convenient thing for you to be using for that. And lists certainly aren't the most convenient way to be dealing with a an integer. So one way we could deal with this is just use various type conversions to get it into the form we want to add one and then convert it back into whatever the output is. In this case, it's a list. So let's start with a type conversion method. So method one will be type conversion. And basically all we're going to do is get the integer into a form that we can just actually just add one to straight up and it will carry out whatever carryover we need to and then we'll convert it back to a list. So how do we convert a list of integers into an actual single integer object that we can add one to? Well, you can't just directly join those into uh, an integer that easily. So we might actually want to convert each of those integers to a string, then use the string join operation, and then we can do that. So this might end up being kind of a convoluted one-liner here, but let's see what we can do. So basically, each of our 
things in our list is a single integer. We want to turn them into strings and then join them into a single string for the whole integer. So basically, we want to say stir of each letter. We'll just say stir i for i in for i in our digits list. So that's converting each one of those from an integer into a string. And now we'll say dot join on that. So that's going to join all of those into one string. So essentially what we have here now is a single string that is our whole integer. Well, we can't use normal addition on a string. So we actually want to turn that into an integer int int on this whole thing. So now we actually have an integer for that whole number represented by each of those list digits in our hands. We can simply add one to it. So now we just have to convert this integer back into that list format where there's one value for each of the places. And so basically we're going to run through these steps that we just did, but in reverse. So we want to now make it back into a string. And then we have to extract each of those elements of the string as an integer into a list. So we can just use another list comprehension to do that. We'll wrap this whole thing in brackets and then say int. We'll just call it X this time for X in this. So this actually ended up being a somewhat convoluted one liner here. It would probably be easier to follow a bit if this is split up across multiple lines, but it should be doing what it's supposed to be doing. We do have to return it. So basically, if we walk through it from the, the innermost part to the outermost part, we're taking our original list of digits, making it all into strings. We're joining that together into a single string, converting it to integer, adding one, converting it back to a string. Then for each of those digits in the new string, we're extracting it as an integer into our final list that we return. So this should be a working solution to the problem. I will hit submit on that as, as long as we didn't screw up any of our parentheses spots or anything that's easy to do when you're doing something that's this long of a one liner. But let's pull over and see what we got here. So it seems that it did actually work. 32 milliseconds faster than about two thirds of Python three submissions. So although it was a bit messy, this is a working solution to that problem. But now let's think about how we could do this if we actually didn't want to use all this kind of type conversion and we just wanted to directly interact with the integers in the list where they're stored. This is probably kind of how you're meant to do this or at least makes the problem a little bit more interesting, I suppose. So let's try a second method here. Method two, which will be basically what we're going to do is we're going to have to loop through the list, but in reverse order, because we want to start with the ones place. We want to add a one to that, and that is in the rightmost position in the array. So that is actually the end of the array. So we'll call this reverse list addition. And so what we're going to want to do is basically just loop through the list, but in reverse order of the indices. So we'll say for I in range, and we want to go through in reverse order instead of front order. So we'll say the length of digits minus one, because that's the last index in the list. And then we want to go in reverse order. So we want to go all the way to index zero, which is the first index. So to do that, we actually have to go to minus one, because when you're doing a range, it constructs the range up to, but not including where you're going to. So we have to go, go to minus one here. And we want the range to be constructed in reverse order. So we also have to include a another minus one to say we're stepping backwards by one instead of forwards. So this will allow us to construct a range that goes over the list, but in reverse order. And now we just have to do whatever logic is necessary to add one. 
So basically the only tricky thing here with this problem is when the current digit we're looking at is a nine, we actually need to set the current index to zero and carry over that next one and then go to the next digit place and add one to that instead of just adding one to the current thing and returning it. So basically all we need to do is say, if the digit we're looking at, so digits I is equal to nine, that means we can't just add one and return. We have to continue with the loop. So in that case, we're going to say digits I is zero and then we have to carry over to the next iteration of the loop, which will go one place down and do this same check basically. But if it's not a nine else, we can simply add one to the current place we're at. So digits I just plus equals one, and then immediately return because we don't have to carry anything over. So in that case, we will return digits and so then this loop now is basically just going through checking does this place need carryover if it does we make it zero and go on to the next iteration and if it doesn't we just return so when this loop has gone through as much as it's going to go through if it actually goes through and doesn't ever return that means we went through the whole integer and had to carry over every time. So if, if this for loop actually gets to the end without returning, that means we must have been past a number where every single digit in the list is a nine. And we basically had to do carry over every time and we're carrying over a one. And we, we need to extend the length of the list then by adding a one on the front of it and then just returning whatever is in the rest of the list. So basically this would be a case like if we were past 999, well, if you add one to that, you get 1000. So this loop would end up putting zeros in those first three digit places, but we need to add the one to the start. So basically if we get to the end of the loop and we still haven't returned yet, let's just return a one in a list plus our digits. So that should take care of that one corner case where we actually carry over through the whole list. And this should also now be a uh, working solution to this as long as there are no errors. So let's hit submit on that one. So let's pull over to the run and see what we got here. So we got a runtime of 28 milliseconds this time, faster than 88% of Python 3 submissions. So in this case, doing it with the um, reverse looping actually resulted in a little bit faster submission than doing the kind of crazy one-liner with type conversion. So I hope this video provided some insight as to how you could approach a problem and how, although you can sometimes use various Python list conversions and things to make one-line solutions that do work, in some cases, if you think about the problem and break it out using more simple constructions, you can come up with a solution that is a little bit more interesting to think about. And in some cases, it might run a little bit faster. So thanks for watching and keep coding.